Hello, my name is Mike Gallag, and in this video we are going to look at using animations with sprite sheets in Allegro 5. Alright, so what I have here on my screen is a lot of the same code from two videos back, where we did our basic animation using several different images. Um, so I have my, my control variables here. Uh, I've removed any of my bitmap uh, code specifically. So no bitmap code here, no loading code or anything like that. Um, this is just to update its position. Remember we had it fly across the screen. It doesn't work right now because I haven't declared this variable yet, this frame width video or variable. Um, so I just commented it out because it's easier just to comment it out. We'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, and no drawing or anything. So basically just tore all the bitmap specific functionality away and everything else is just very generic. We're still updating our frames and everything here, uh, but I took the bitmap specific stuff out of it. So when using a sprite sheet, Basically, we're going to have one image that's much bigger, and it's got a bunch of smaller images inside of it. Uh, the one thing about using a sprite sheet is that we don't know how big each individual frame is inside the code. Uh, because remember, we can't just do like an AL get image or get bitmap width because the bitmap is actually really, really large. It's not our individual, our individual um, uh, frames. So. The one thing it's kind of, I don't, I don't like it so much, but you kind of have to do it. I mean, there's really nothing else you can do, is you have to actually specify how big is each frame uh, in this animation. So I'm going to create two new variables here. I'm going to do int frame width is 128. My images just happen to be 128 pixels wide and 128 pixels tall. If yours is different, then your numbers will be different. Frame height equals 128. So you'll just have to check and see how big were the images that went into your sprite sheet that made up, you know, made up your sprite sheet. Mine happened to be 128 by 128. All right. Now, instead of using an array like we did in the previous video, I'm going to create a single bitmap called image. And that bitmap is going to hold my entire sprite sheet. So I'm going to come down here, pass my image add-on, but before I create my event queues, and I'm going to say image equals L load bitmap. And I'll specify the one we made in our previous video, which was sprite sheet demo.bmp. Great. Um, and then before I do anything else, I'll do L convert mask to alpha. And I'm going to pass in image and L app. RGB and the color in this particular image yours will be different is 106 76 48 that brown color and then before I do anything else I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go AL destroy bitmap image so I don't have any memory release okay great uh, so we've created our image we've loaded our image into memory uh, we have given it or we've converted the mask to uh, basically our alpha color to get rid of it I can uncomment this. You'll remember in the, the two videos ago, we did if x is less than or equal to zero minus image width, right? But now our image width is, is huge, so we don't want that. We want it to be our frame width, is that, which is that variable we created above. And then all that's left is to draw it. I mean, you might think, well, there should be some in-depth uh, code to it, but really, it's not, uh, it's not all that difficult. You know, all we have to do is we have to know our current frame. We have to, the fundamentals of animation have not changed for us. Uh, we're still increasing our count until we're greater than delay, and then we're switching our frame, our current frame variable. I mean, that's it. You know, that code does not change. All that changes is how we draw it. So before we just do like an AL draw bitmap, and we draw which drew whichever image from that array uh, was our current image. Now we're just going to do some math to figure out which frame we're currently on and pick that frame out of our sprite sheet. That function is AL, draw, bitmap, region. We're just drawing a region of the bitmap we've loaded up. And so our first variable is the image itself, which we'll call image. And then it wants to know the starting X and the starting Y. Where in our bitmap uh, sheet are we starting? I'm gonna bring it up here real quick. So say we're starting with this first frame of animation, we're gonna start with zero, zero. But for our second frame of animation, we want to start at 128, 0, just because they happen to be 128 wide. And then for our third frame of animation, we're going to start at 
uh, t- I almost could, forgot to, what 128 plus 128 was, 256, 0, uh, and then 512, 0, and so on and so forth. All right? Uh, so we're just going to use a little bit of math to figure out where we're at. And that math is going to be our current frame, because remember, it starts at 0, times frame width. That's it. Um, so if our current frame is 0, we'll be at 0, 0. If it's 1, we'll be at 128. If it's 2, we'll be at 256, so on and so forth. Um, and then our height is going to be 0, only because we're using it as a strip. There are no multiple rows of animation, so 0. If we were using multiple frames of animation, I would have to use some more math here uh, to get us down to that next frame. And in the future, we will do animations for the whole sheet, and I'll, I'll show you how to find the rows of animation. But in the meantime, you know, if you feel so inclined, try to figure it out. You know, the math isn't is it too complex? It's pretty simple. Um, so, you know, give it a go. Um, okay, so we specify the, the, the X and the Y, and then we need to specify the width. So we're starting at a certain X and a certain Y. How wide is this region that we're drawing? All right, so I'm just going to pass in frame width. And then it wants to know uh, starting height. How tall is what we're drawing? And so I'm going to do frame height. And then finally, it's going to want to know, okay, now where is it going? We declared those two variables before x and y. That's no different. Oh, it's probably width wrong. That's no different than in the previous video, uh, where the y is static and the x gets incremented here. I mean, that's it. You know, we have we're just drawing the region of our bitmap spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and run this, and there our guy goes. Pretty indistinguishable from the last way we did it. Um, only the, the biggest difference is now we only have one image, uh, this variable image as opposed to a whole array of images, which we had to load individually and delete individually and iterate through uh, all the time. So we're just doing it all now with a single image. And it, it gives us a, a lot more uh, power when it comes to having multiple sprites on the screen uh, and, and doing, you know, doing multiple uh, uh, sprites and animations and things like that. We only need to load one bitmap instead of many, many bitmaps. So it uh, becomes much more manageable. Uh, when our, our games scale up a little bit. All right, so that is that is sprite sheet animation. Um, in our next video, I'm going to look at you know how do we how do we draw multiple items on the screen at the same time? You know that was that was one item. So we have all our variables and our functions and, and stuff like that set a certain way. What if I wanted to have you know a hundred or a thousand items? You know. Um, so I want to come up with a, a framework that's generic enough that we can have a whole bunch of stuff um, and, and, and powerful enough, but yet simple enough, you know, they can go in this series. Because like I said, we're, we're doing things simple in this series. Uh, and so that will be in our next video. Uh, stay tuned.